Hello there viewers, good day to you. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you guys are here. I know, I am super glad to be here. This video is a little bit different than the normal type of video. Uh, just a very small request from my consumer. Uh, they asked that, uh, that I remove this, uh, this larger alternator pulley and install a smaller pulley. So basically what we're gonna do is just a simple gear change on, uh, on this alternator and it's gonna give it more output at lower speed. Now I know what you're thinking, uh, I've done similar videos to this in the past and that may have actually been the inspiration uh, for this pulley change out, but I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. There's gonna be some similarities to the, the last video I did on one of these, but there are also gonna be some differences. And uh, so bear with me, uh, this is kinda gonna be a quick one. Uh, we're basically uh, gonna pop this guy off, pop the new one on, and um, we're gonna test and see uh, if there is any difference in power production uh, at idle on full load between this pulley and the new pulley. Now, the reason for, uh, for wanting to do such a thing is if you're engaged in a lot of short trips or a lot of idle time, what can happen is the alternator may not be able to charge the battery or batteries uh, back to their full charge level due to numerous restarts. It takes a little bit of time to get all that power that the starter sucked up out of the batteries back into the batteries if the engine is not being driven for X amount of time or miles or the alternator just doesn't have enough time to uh, to get the thing started. For example, if you're a delivery person and you pull up to a delivery, shut your car off. Go to another delivery, shut your car off. Go to another delivery, shut your car off. You're actually bringing down the charge level of your batteries in between all of those uh, those short trips. So what we're gonna do is install this uh, this pulley here to hopefully try to mitigate those uh, that type of situation. But before we do that, I want to take some measurements. I have over here a digital tachometer. Uh, these things are available on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I think this was like 30 bucks or whatever, but it's basically a little laser and it's got a little, uh, little camera thing on it. And we're gonna shoot this laser at a, uh, a predetermined or marked uh, marking on the pulley and it's gonna tell us how fast this pulley is spinning around. So the way we're gonna do that is with a little piece of elect uh, reflective electric reflective tape we'll put some tape on there and then we'll laser the tape the little meter is going to tell us just how fast this pulley is spinning uh, then we can repeat the exact same procedure on the smaller pulley and see how much faster the charging unit is going to turn with just a simple pulley change it's kind of like uh, replacing the pulley on a supercharger to make it go faster or slow now i'm also going to take some measurements at the alternator output wire with an amp meter to see if our low speed amp production or power production uh, changes with just the use of a simple pulley. Getting started, we'll notice there's some, uh, like some paint on this pulley right here. I'm gonna try to rinse that paint off of there. A little bit of brake clean. There we go. That could, uh, skew the measurements of the tool. So now, we'll take this little reflective piece of tape business, stick that on there, and that will give us the, the pickup that we need for the little laser thermometer. There we go, that's good right there. So next, let's go ahead and fire up the voltmeter here. We're gonna set it to the milli millivolt range because I have an amp probe that uh, is gonna clip onto this unit. Now, I, I realize we're looking for amps, not millivolts. This thing takes an amp reading and then converts it to a millivolt signal for the multimeter to pick it up. So right now we're calibrated to near zero. Select this thing on. And that one amp's not a huge difference, but I'm, or a huge problem, but I'm gonna try to dial that out. Calibrate this, there we go. 0 0.08 amps, that's fine. So what we'll do is reach in, restart the engine, and we're gonna get a baseline measurement for how much power is being produced. My darling wife unit, Lauren, she's gonna help us out. Laura, hop in there and fire it up, turn the AC on full blast, and turn on the high beams. Okay, engine start complete. Let's go ahead and clamp this uh, output wire for the nader here. And we can see it's producing about 69, 68, 70 amps. 
Okay, so that's 70 amps of production on the stock alternator at idle. Let's go ahead and fire up our laser device here. And it looks like this alternator is turning at 2,040 RPM. Roughly 2,040 RPM. You guys see that right there? 2,050. Lauren, go ahead and shut it down. And now we're at zero RPM. Very good. Okay, so before I take this belt off, let's crack the, uh, the bolt loose here. Unclickage. Good. Okay, so the tensioner for this belt is right down here to the left underneath of this hot air intake. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this belt loose. There we go. Clever little Chevy trick. You can lock your wrench in at your uh, water pump pulley right there. Just kind of flexed it over. Anyway, what we do is just pull this belt back some. Not all the way. Get on there, belt. Pull that guy back a little bit. And this thing should just slide right off of there. There we go. So that's our old pulley. And that's our new one. You can see it's a uh, substantially smaller. It actually fits inside of the other one. Look at that. We can double stack pulleys. It'd be kind of cool. Anyway, take this guy, slide it on, and I think we have a bit of a clearance problem here. So we'll try to space it. They gave us some washers to space this pulley out with. Very, very tight squeeze. That's the old one. So we'll start with the smallest spacer first. Get on there. It still touches the case, okay. Next spacer. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think we're good with that. Here, we'll put this one on. And that little one too, there. Let's see if this is gonna work. Click. Sweet, okay, so that's on. It's free spinning. It's not binding up. I do not know if this belt is going to be too long sometimes they they work and sometimes they don't but it looks like we're going to find out right now so let's pull this wrench back let the belt tension seems to be okay there's that's where it stops and i can still tighten it a little farther so that tensioner does have room to to move around so that should be okay all the grooves are lined up, tensioners lined up, that's lined up. We need to put a piece of tape on there. I wonder if I can just steal the piece that I, that I used. I'll use the original piece in case the width of the tape is consequential to the measurements. Okay, put that right on there. My darling, will you hop back in this, uh, this van truck thing or whatever and uh, Van, Dave's laughing at me. Restart it, turn all the loads on, high beams, uh, AC, full blast, all that good stuff. Beginning engine restarting. Okay, no slipping. And now we're up to... I think the tape, no, there it is. We're up to, it's not right, should be going faster. Two thousand eight hundred and fifty RPM. 2850 is where it landed. 2847, yep. So, we confirmed that the gear change has caused 
a faster speed at idle. So now let's see if this thing is gonna make more power at idle. So we're back on the 400 amp scale. Put that guy back on. Look at here, 125 amps. So now it's making more power at the same engine RPM. We got 30 more amps of production out of it without having to raise engine speed. So again, what that thing's gonna do is allow us to have more cooling or more power in traffic and in short trip conditions. And with the addition of the fans coming on, now we're shooting out 120 amps. Look at that. All right, darling, you go ahead and shut everything down. Turn off all the switches and stuff. So that's proof in the pudding right there. A gear change on your alternator in the right circumstances can affect power output, which could ultimately lead to longer battery life. So that's the short video, proofs in the pudding. We used a laser thermal tachometer to determine a different speed and it appears to be highly effective. And again, in this particular case, it did not require a belt change. Um, sometimes you do these modifications and you have to go down to a shorter belt, but this one wasn't the case. This belt works out just fine. So uh, I have nothing more to offer you on this particular video other than a thank you for watching this video. As always, let me know what you think about this short video in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button where down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a video. End of Tejo, end of alternator modification, end of transmission.